Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Pixel City Talks. This is the fourth and final episode in the series about Android Wear. And we'll be talking about Android Wear apps and why that's actually a brilliant way to engage with users in a novel, uh, novel way on the go uh, with a special interface for micro interactions. And Watch Faces is a one particular example of a uh, Android Wear application. Uh, and I covered that in depth in the last video. So if you haven't actually seen that video already, you may want to add it to your watch list. So Android Wear applications are much like conventional, Wear applica conventional Android applications in terms of development. But there are some special considerations to be taken for design, deployment, and user interaction. So actually, in the first video of this series, um, you'll get an introduction to the best guidelines uh, for designing for Android Wear. So you might want to check out that video uh, over here as well. Now that you have a good understanding of what makes a great experience on Android Wear, and I'm talking about those four aspects about keeping um, interfaces simple, interactions minimal, and responding to the user's intentions intelligently, let's explore the basics of creating your first Android Wear application. Here we see a couple of existing Android Wear applications that show off how awesome Android Wear can really be. Um, Google Play Music lets you play music offline from your watch and lets you control it uh, through some simple interactions. So you can actually go for a run and leave your phone at home and using Bluetooth headphones, you can actually enjoy your music on the go. Um, Google Keep is a great example of using a always on screen. So when you're walking through the supermarket and you're gathering your groceries, you don't have to be afraid that the application closes in the meantime. And finally, Google Fit um, combines fitness tracking with an efficient and actually really pleasurable interface. So you can actually see your fitness history um, on your watch. So I bet you have an awesome idea for an Android Wear application. So let's go straight ahead and dive into the details. It's easiest to follow the steps of creating a new project through Android Studio's wizard. So let's go ahead and take a look at running Android Studio from fresh and starting a new project. So I'll create a new project, and I'll give this project a name of a project a colleague and I have been working on. So we'll call it DevCheck. Now we have to select a platform SDK, and this is the platform that the mobile is going to be running on. Now remember that Android uh, Wear is only supported from 4.3 and up, so it's safe to choose this as a minimum if your application is specifically for Android Wear. Make sure to check, of course, the uh, Wear platform. And you can use, you can target 4.4 as the base for Android Wear. But if you're going to be using um, later APIs, for instance, the Watch Face API for um, 5.0 and up, then you might want to target that one uh, instead. So I'll just choose 4.4. And here we're choosing uh, whether or not we want to have an activity in our mobile module. Well, we won't do this. We'll just skip this one. Um, but we do want to select a activity for our Wear module. So I'll select a blank Wear activity so just to, to have a default set. And we'll provide a different name into this activity. I'll call it uh, Wear activity. And that automatically changes the layout name. And it also gives the same name into the round and rectangular layouts. And we'll see how that is actually determined in just a moment. Now, as this is building, we'll see in just a second that we have two separate modules, one for Wear and one for mo uh, Mobile. And Android Studio opens up, showing you that everything has already been created. Here we see our Android um, Wear activity uh, layout. And if we take a look at the um, XML, we'll see that it's using this um, view called a Watch View Stub that intelligently chooses a rectangular or round layout file based on which um, uh, kind of device it's running on. So if we take a look at the rectangular layout, we'll see that this is just a conventional Android layout, nothing special here. And if we look at the preview, we'll see that for this example, it's aligned to the top left-hand corner. So this is for rectangular. And for round, um, this one is instead centered. So that's a easy way in this particular demo to see the difference between the two. And if I select the correct, um, the correct, correct uh, preview, we'll see that it, that makes sense, of course, because otherwise it would be cropped by the edges of the, um, the watch face. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you was that the uh, wizard has already taken care of setting up two separate modules. So if we take a closer look at our project, we'll see that these two modules have already been correctly set up. You have the mobile module and you have the wear module. And if you take a look at the Gradle scripts, 
We have Gradle script set up for where and mobile also. And the settings, this basically shows that that's the case. We have a reference to the mobile and where subdirectories, indicating those are modules. And if we look at the mobile module, we'll also see that it uses a special keyword to reference its uh, where counterpart. So it uses the where keyword to point to the where project. And if we look at the where module, uh, we'll see that the build Gradle here has um, also something special. Take a closer look at these dependencies. You'll see that it's not using the conventional support and play services, but it's using a special version specifically for wearables. So the wearable support library and the wearable play services. Also make sure that your wears manifest includes the uses feature to target the Android hardware type of the watch. This is important to make sure that the Android device that it's going to be installed in understands that this is an APK for Android Wear. It's important to bear in mind how applications are installed onto Android Wear. Users don't directly install applications on Android Wear itself, but they instead do so through the interactions on their host device. So for instance, on Google Play, they would select to install an application onto their host device, and that in turn, through the Android Wear companion app, would install that application over Bluetooth. For developers, it's a slightly different story. You can either attach your Android Wear device through USB to your, uh, to your machine and debug that way or deploy a debug application onto your, onto your watch. Or for devices that don't actually support a wired connection like the Moto 360, you can instead debug over uh, Bluetooth through your host device and deploy it uh, in that manner. You might want to check out the documentation exactly what the instructions are through ADB to do that. Um, and there's an alternative. You can actually deploy an, an, an Android Wear application um, in the conventional way that a user would. And it's easiest to do so just to simply um, change your build variant to use the uh, release mode. If you use the release mode, your APK of your Wear module will be compiled and it will be put into the res raw directory of your mobile uh, module, and that APK the, of the mo mobile will then in turn be installed onto your host device, and um, Android Wear companion app will then take care of deploying that over Bluetooth like it normally would uh, for Google Play. Having gone through all these steps of the wizard and setting up your project in this way has provided you with an Android Wear project that is a sandbox where you as an Android developer are very familiar. You can take things that you're already accustomed with for instance, activities and layouts, and even fragments, and put those to use like you would normally do, but on an Android Wear application. And there are a couple of extra things that you can do. You can, for instance, take a grid view pager, which provides an additional interface, a unique user experience for small screens like on Android Wear, that really fit into that ecosystem much more fluidly. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to take as an example in it, and to encourage you and to spark your creative um, ideas. Uh, of what you can actually do um, on Android Wear that's more than the rest. So one example of something really cool you can do on Android Wear is combining Android Wear applications with those cards that overlay your watch face. So these cards that appear in the, the what I was talking about in the second episode, you can show cards from a host application without even having to write a single line in an Android Wear application. But the nice thing is you can make your cards even prettier by uh, providing an Android Wear application. And you can do this through something called a display intent. And here we see two examples. Here on the left, we see the four-day forecast from Google Weather showing us a specially decorated card with um, some icons and some alignments that you can't normally achieve using the conventional card layout. Here on the right, you see the Google Fit layout of a um, progress towards your fitness goal of a, of a particular day. And this too is something very unique and it's probably actually done using a custom view. And how this actually works is um, the application running on Android Wear creates this card itself. So that's distinct from creating a notification from the host device and then having it mirror display onto your Wear device as well. So these display intents are actually referencing an activity running on Android Wear and that activity is then drawn inside a card. And you can instruct Android Wear how, si how large this card should actually display. So you have a, uh, a several different sizes from extra large to actually showing a full screen in the case of Google Fit. And we do this using the wearable extender. As before, we use this wearable extender and we set the custom size preset. 
and then we use a this display intent. And all this display intent really is, it's a um, pending intent to a particular activity. And that activity is then drawn inside the card, and you're good to go. Except there's one small little thing you have to pay attention to, is when you declare the activity in your where mo modules manifest, is you have to make sure that you export the activity, you allow for embedding, and you set the task affinity to nothing. And this is, of course, to allow the Android system to access the contents of your activity so that it can be displayed as part of the system UI in the card layout. And these are just a few examples of Android Wear applications and what you can do with them. So I'll just let the creative freedom to you and make the next awesome application for Android Wear. I hope this series has been an awesome tool for you to really get those creative juices flowing. I hope to see you in the next series on a different topic sometime in the future. Until then, toodaloo!